Hey everybody, Lucas from our Liberty House here and today we are going to be doing a soil test on four of our six garden beds. And we're gonna be using this Luster Leaf Rapid Test Soil Test Kit. You can get them at any nursery, Ace Hardware, um, the works. So why would you wanna do a soil test? Um, it's something good just to do a standard before like a big spring planting season, but also in our case, nothing was growing last year. Um, it was weird, so we decided to do a soil test. So if you're having issues growing, you might want to do a soil test and figure out what's the root of the problem. And our big problem is our pH. So that's the first thing we're going to test. And these soil test kits will test pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, your NPK. So you can adjust what style fertilizer you're going to buy depending on this soil test kit and get a more refined idea of what you need to amend into your garden for the optimal results. So we're gonna go through this, uh, test these four beds, and the first thing we're gonna do is the pH. All right, so let's test the pH of our first bed. This is our newest bed, and arguably has the soil that hasn't been amended the most. The soil we bought last year from um, Landscape Supply Company was awful so here we are so this one actually has some residual from that so we're going to get the ph meter or ph test kit and then you'll see these little green capsules um, each one of these is one test so pop that out just get all our supplies ready and then i just use like a quarter teaspoon thing and you're going to fill the soil up into there we're gonna use distilled water. That's preferred, it's not mandatory, but preferred because it won't affect your readings in any way, because it's just neutral water. And then it comes with a pipette, but I lost it, so I'm gonna use a straw. <clears throat> so we'll just get some of this soil mixture, and then you're gonna fill it up to the soil line. On the thing. They're really intuitive and just follow the instructions and you should be totally, anybody can do this. It's super easy. And you got a little too much, so just sprinkle a touch out. Sprinkle a little more out. There we go. All right, so I got the soil mixture to the right line. And then the next thing you do is you break open one of these capsules. They slide open, so you don't really have to break them. And then you just pour the mixture in there. Make sure you get it all. Discard that. Make sure we have our cap. And we're gonna fill up super scientific with my straw here. We're gonna fill it up to the water line. Oh, got it perfect. Okay, so once it's at the water line, we're gonna put our cap, make sure it's here, and you're just gonna shake it. And the instructions say, shake thoroughly. So there's no time, but just you want to get it good and mixed. And then what we're going to do is you'll set it down and you're supposed to wait a whole minute um, for the chemicals to judge your pH. So we'll let this settle for a minute and then we'll use the color chart on this side to decide if our pH is too alkaline, too basic or too acidic. And we know our soil is too alkaline, but we're just gonna get a baseline and then we'll redo this test probably in a month after we've amended our soil and get another reading right before we're ready to plant for our spring season. Okay, so it's been about a minute. We've let this settle. You can see some of the soil amendments we put as barkier, so it's floating up top, but everything else is pretty much settled down and it's hard for you guys to see but you're just going to match the color to the chart and you want to do this uh, preferably natural light don't you know put like a flashlight behind it but you don't want to do it in direct sunlight 
So we're kind of in our patio here. It's a nice day. It's just a nice ambient light. And we can see we're actually doing pretty good in this bed. It's a 6.5 pH slight acid, which is where most plants tolerate about a 6.5. Um, you're pretty good. So I did amend this last week. Uh, we, sh we tested a quick um, couple beds just to see where we're at and then decided to redo it. So I did put some soil acidifier in there. So it seemed to be working. So that's good sign for us that the amendments we're doing are starting to work. So we're going to do the next three beds and see where we're at. Okay, the second bed we've tested, you can see there's an obvious color difference than the first one. And this one is, you know, probably uh, definitely above 7.0, maybe right at 7.5, which is way too alkaline for um, good plant growth. So we're definitely going to have to amend this one. So we tested all four of our beds pH and we'll kind of go over the results here. And I'm just marking everything on little post-it notes, whatever you want to do. Um, that way at the end, we'll make a plan for uh, the spring for soil amendments. So this bed, good pH 6.5. We're not going to do anything with the pH there. Um, this is the problem child right here. Um, it was our flower bed last year. We probably didn't pay enough attention to it and its pH is 7.5 and it makes sense because I've had Brussels sprouts in the ground for like eight weeks and they haven't gotten any bigger. Um, and then the our arch trellis beds a 6.5 ish pH perfect and then our other trellis bed as a 6.5 pH so we're not going to do anything with those just focus on this one and then we'll retest in two to three weeks maybe push it to four just so we're closer to when we're really going to start planting and you might say to yourself, why is pH important? You know, everyone talks about nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, like your NPK. But if your pH is either too acidic or too alkalotic, it affects the bioavailability of those key nutrients. And your plant won't be able to absorb them into its root system if the pH is off. So that's why we start with the pH. It doesn't matter if you have the best MPK in the world for whatever plant. If your pH is out of whack, your plant will be out of whack too. Okay, to transition to the next steps, to test that MPK, um, we're gonna fill these jars with um, two and a half cups of distilled water. It's all in the packaging. Um, the packaging says one cup of soil to five cups of water, but we don't have jars that big. So you can just cut it in half. It's just like baking. Um, so we'll fill these with water. You give them a really good shake and then you have to let them settle. And the packaging says 30 minutes to 24 hours. So we'll let ours settle um, two to three hours. Maybe we'll, we'll see. It really just depends on how fast it settles down. And then you're gonna test the liquid instead of testing the soil in each one. This one, we're just gonna use the liquid. So we need to let it settle and kind of clear up and then we'll be able to test them. All right guys, it's been a couple hours of the soil samples and the water settling and now it's time to test our nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, that MPK. So the first step is we're gonna take the dropper and fill up each one of these and then you're gonna put the appropriate colored uh, capsule in there, shake them up, and let them sit for 10 minutes. So we'll just try to get liquid only as best we can. This one had some bark in there, so it might have a little. Try not to get any of just you want to try as much as you can to get liquid only. So that one out. Springtime birds are squawking. Don't they know it's only February? All right. 
So we'll start with the nitrogen, which is in this case, the purple tab. Sticking to my hand. All right, so try to do this without spilling, but to where you guys can also see. Get the whole solution in there. Make sure it's empty. Get it nice and closed, and then just shake, shake, shake. Just get it good and mixed. And then you're gonna let them sit for 10 minutes. So we'll keep doing the other ones. Wow, that one makes whatever chemical reaction it makes to tell us where the nitrogen's at. Okay, phosphorus. See, this one came out real easy. All right. Yeah, make sure you get all of the powder in the, out of the capsules because then you'll get the most accurate result. Shake it up. And then finally our potassium, which is your K and NPK. It's not breaking down. Super interesting TV. It's a little bit loud. All right. So now we'll let these three sit. We'll judge them based on the given um, reference card. And then we'll write it down so when we go to amend our beds we have um, an idea of what kind of fertilizer we need to put and we're going to be doing a whole video on our fertilizer soil amendment like pre-spring major growing season for most gardeners out there kind of like what we do and what we're going to do with the results of this test so subscribe if you guys want to see our journey and how we're going to test and prep the rest of our beds and see where the growing season goes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and let's go over it. The nitrogen test results. Um, looks pretty depleted it's not this nice uh, purple surplus or even sufficient so we're gonna go with deficient because it's not completely clear where it's depleted but we'll go n1 deficient so we'll make a note nitrogen deficient and we'll move on so phosphorus this one also we don't see we have a surplus um, but it's not completely clear, um, but it's definitely not where we want it to be here in this nice blue sufficient color. So our phosphorus is at least deficient. So we'll put P deficient. So we're gonna have some work to do on this bed. And then our potassium, our K. It is also not this nice orange sufficient color that we'd want to see. It's at least deficient, if not depleted. So this bed needs fertilizer. We will be amending this bed before uh, continuing to plant and grow things on it. So we'll write K deficient. So that whole bed is deficient, but our pH is good. So as soon as we fix the NPK, 
in that bed. Everything should grow great. We'll have a good growing season. We're gonna do the next three beds. And we'll go over all the results and then eventually what our plan is to fix everything. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, we did two yesterday. We kind of ran out of light and wanted to finish the next two this morning. And like I said, the samples can sit for 24 hours. So if you run out of time, just let them sit and finish up the next day. And the results are in. And the overarching thing we found is we are deficient of nitrogen and phosphorus in all of our beds. And then potassium, we are adequate to sufficient. So we're pretty good on potassium. So the plan now is we'll end up going to the nursery and looking for a fertilizer that's high in nitrogen, high in phosphorus, and a little bit lower in potassium just as a supplemental feeding. And we'll do a whole other video on that and kind of show you guys our final prep before the big spring growing season. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe gave you the confidence to test your soil. It's something good to do every year just as a baseline or if you're having problems and you're like, why is my plant not growing? Test your soil. These kits are cheap, like 20 bucks and you get 10 tests. So we, we'll probably do this again mid-year, mid-growing season to see where we're at. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.